So good to see you in person today, and I appreciate that you're here masked and distanced as we have to be as much as possible. I'm going to begin by lighting the chalice. The chalice is a symbol of the Unitarian Universalism Church, and it seems fitting to begin a very important service with that. We've had some time to adapt to our loss of our cherished friend, but for a short time today, we honor Mary Ann's legacy, and I'm going to begin by reading her obituary. Mary Ann Sabo Four was born in St. Louis, Missouri, May 31, 1937. Mary Ann passed away surrounded by her loving and adoring family in Galveston, Tuesday, Monday, June 29, 2020. Mary Ann, known as Mimi to family and friends, was an accomplished and highly regarded lifetime artist whose work was recognized with numerous top awards. <clears throat> including Best of Show in art shows in Southern Oklahoma and North Texas and Galveston. Many of her paintings in nearly all mediums have been purchased and hung in homes by our admirers throughout both states. Most of her early years were in Oklahoma City where she graduated from class in high school in 1955. That year she married the father of her three children Robert O. Coe, 
After their separation, she married Larry Eakin Jr. and moved to Marietta, Oklahoma, where her children graduated from high school. Subsequent to his death, she and Ron Four married and lived at Lake Ardmore, Oklahoma, until his passing. Marianne is survived by her life partner of 11 years, Ed Beasley, and children's son, Bob Coe, and partner, Kyle Allen, son, Bob Coe, daughter, Christy Pearson, and husband, Jeff. I hope you'll get a chance to meet them here today. She is also survived by sister, Sharon Bozalis, and husband, John. Mimi's grandchildren, Brittany Baxter, Head, Katie Coe, and two great-grandchildren also survive. She also leaves special friend Kenny Tyler, who she loved like a son. Dogs, Gizmo, and Carly also miss her. She was preceded in death by parents Joe and Viola Sabo, previously mentioned husbands, grandson Jake Baxter, and many, many canine, canine pets. She was cremated, and in keeping with her request, the family spread her ashes here on her beloved island in the waters of Babes Beach. I hope you get a chance to go by Babes Beach while you're here. I'd like to begin with a fitting tribute. And I thought it was gonna be a surprise, but it's already up. <clears throat> You have no doubt noticed the gallery wall on the east wall with, um, it is displaying a few of Mary Ann's paintings and I'm amazed that they got so many up there, it's wonderful. I'm pleased to announce that this gallery wall is being dedicated to Mary Ann with a plaque that reads, and it's already up there, in loving memory and appreciation of Mary Ann Four and Ed Beasley. So enjoy it and enjoy the paintings that are up there as well. I'm happy to introduce Denise Frankie, who will sing now for us. Watch his woods fill up with snow. A little horse was thinking, Queen, to stop without a farmhouse near between the wood and frozen lake. Darkest evening of the year. his harness bells a shame. Ask if there is some mistake. All the other sounds are sweet. Easy wind and down we play. Words are lovely, dark and deep. 
have promises to keep. Miles to go before I sleep. Miles to go before I Thank you, Denise. Beautiful. Um, I'm also subbing today for Cheryl Henry, who couldn't be here. And so the next uh, item on this program is a celebration message. Uh, and what we're going to do is to ask you to now become part of this um, celebration of Mary Ann. If you'd like to come forward, and light a candle, which is our, our tradition here. Um, I invite you to do so, and I'm gonna turn this mic off. And then... Just raise your hand, come up here, I'll give you a candle, and you can light it from the chalice and say whatever you'd like to say. I'll let you use the mic. Vicki? Introduce yourself, please. Yeah, I was going to this time. I'm Vicki Fransel. Okay. Uh, I knew Marianne and Ed for a couple of reasons. One, I have a painting of hers in my house that I just love, and it's a sunset painting. And the other way I know them is that I also helped them uh, adopt a dog. No surprise there, right? But anyway, she's a wonderful per person and she's gonna be very, very as already missed. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, Martha. You don't have to be a Unitarian to light a candle, by the way. <laughs> Uh, Marianne and I automatically, Marianne and I automatically connected uh, through our art, and but mostly because she was a kind and wonderful and very funny person. We always had the greatest times together and the greatest laughs, and we always talked about how we were going to get together and paint, which we never did. And I'm sorry that we didn't, but I enjoyed and loved knowing her and miss her a lot. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. Dave. So I'm Dave Delmanhorst, and uh, I knew Marianne mostly through uh, the Ollie yoga classes and, of course, here at church. Um, a kinder and more caring person you'd never hope to meet. Cecilia? Oh, come on. I'm sorry. Please, we need somebody different to come up. Cecilia, Cecilia, you can wait. Come on around here. <laughs> Be sure to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Katie Ko. I'm Mimi's granddaughter. Good to meet you, Katie. Go anywhere you want. Okay, I'm going to try to do this. <laughs> um,
sorry. Mimi was a shining light and everyone who met her knew that. She inspired me always. If I needed someone to talk to, just to call, she always would say, you know, just the best things that I needed to hear throughout my life um, in high school and college, and even after that. Um, she always inspired me to do art, obviously. She was amazing. I never really got the painting jeans, which was okay, um, because I did pottery. Um, I started it when I was super young and then uh, ended up doing it in high school and started a class back up, um, I guess about a year ago um, or a year and a half maybe. I was one of her last things that she was wishing for me was to get back into my pottery. And of course I did for her. Um, I do a lot of things for her every day. Um, and if I need her, I just look up. So if you guys need her, she's there for you as well. <laughs> just look up and she's looking out after each and every one of you. I promise you that. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Cecilia. Hi, I'm Cecilia and um, Mary Ann was so special. Um, her warmth really was her most amazing quality. Yes, she was a good artist, but her warmth is what gathered everyone in. And when we would have our potlucks, I remember when they first moved here, Ed and Mary Ann from uh, Oklahoma, um, Mary Ann said, I'm Mary Ann. And, and, she, and I told her, I'm Cecilia. And she said, come sit with me. She didn't know me from Adam. And she made me feel so welcome, as did Ed. And um, she carried that through. She never wavered in her loyalty to her friends. She would always give her best. And I remember meals we had together. I remember visits. And she left an enormous, um, I, I can't even come up with any more words. I miss her all the time. And when I do my artwork, I think of Mary Ann too, because she was so encouraging and always said, you know, you're wonderful, you're great, you can do this. And um, wow, I, do, I wish there were more Mary Ann's. She was really the best. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, come on, Denise. I couldn't see that far. This candle's for Marianne's smile and the light that she radiated when she was here and still is, still is. Thank you. Margaret. My name's Margaret. I will ditto what everyone else has said, but the word that hasn't been said, Mary Ann was classy. She was just classy. When I thought of her, that is the word that came to me. She was kind, loving, sweet, generous, and she would just class act. And she will challenge us all to be that. 
Thank you. Anyone else? Family? Friends? Well, I'll light a last candle because we always light a last candle when we do this, although this is a little bit different. And I'm, I'm just going to ditto everything that's been said. Um, Marianne was active in the Art League, and I know there are people there that wish they could be here for this service today who miss her very much. We'll miss seeing her new work every six weeks, like uh, she often had new work in the gallery. So I don't think it's um, too much to say that she's being greatly missed by the artists in this town and, of course, by her family and friends. Sharon Goodwin, member of this fellowship, will now come to read a, piece, a poem that she's written. Yeah, I, I, I didn't um, light a candle because I knew I was coming up here, so I would have your attention. Um, I will just also say, um, Marianne was always very kind. And I used to be a very quiet person. I've written poetry since I was 16 years old, so you know, 100 years, I mean, geez. <laughs> but um, this particular poem I shared at a service here, and she was quite taken with it and talked to me about it afterwards. And from then on, she would talk to me about my poetry. And that was, that really was so touching for me because I don't, people, I, I don't really talk to people about it too much. You know, poets, when I go to poetry readings, you know, you're supposed to do stuff. But just in general, I don't talk about it. And it was so nice. She wanted a copy and, and I sent her a copy. And then ultimately I sent her the two um, poetry books that I've published myself that I, I Ed has them now, but Ed, because he knew this particular poem and how much it meant to Marianne, he asked me to share it with all of you today. The title is On Being Whole. The essence of human competence lies within the depths of one's soul, for being a competent human being is merely a person that is whole. Being whole is not having all the right parts or having the ability to walk a line. It's not being able to see or hear or speak, but rather a joining of heart and mind. Competencies come from much teaching, but the essence of this human learning takes one to our inner hunger and the guidance of our heart's yearning. There is so much of life our hearts want to know, but the job of living takes our time as we grow. The following are some of the competencies I desire and the true meaning that sets my heart on fire. To love without condition, to give without taking, to listen without anger, to learn without prejudice, to understand without judging, to see people without color, to hope without despair, to feel without touching, to forgive without remembering, to know without seeing, to care without pity, to speak without deceit, to believe without proof, to dream without limit. If all these things I learn in this one life I'm living, then one life is all I need to give back what I've been given. I think we can all agree that Mary Ann had learned these things, and she shared that kind of love and kindness that she had with everyone 
certainly everyone here, but everyone that had the privilege of being allowed to be part of her life. I'm grateful for that. And I, I know you all are too. I have brought copies of the poem, which I'll leave outside on the table in case anyone would like to have it. But I, I appreciate being part of this service. I appreciate knowing Mary in, in, in a different way because it was because of my poetry. And so we kind of had a, a special connection. And I have to say just the fact that she was called Mimi, that's what my grandchildren called me. And I thought, oh, well, that's sweet. It's kind of another little weird connection that I didn't know about until the obituary and I read that. But anyway, Ed and I have stayed friends since he moved to Oklahoma as, as many people in this congregation have. And um, they were both, well, still are, always will be loved. And Marianne was special to many, many people here in Galveston, not just our church, but I know there's so many people that would have had much to share with you guys. Thank you. I think it's done. Denise is gonna Denise is gonna provide some music again. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, Ed asked me to sing Marianne's request, so I, I was deeply moved by that. I didn't know Marianne as well as many of as you do, uh, but the thing that really uh, the thing that really moved me about Marianne when I had interactions with her is when she walked into the room, how she lit up the room. And uh, I can still see that radiant smile, uh, regardless of what challenges she was dealing with. It just filled the room. And so I chose this song um, because of her smile. It's a Charlie Chaplin song. Uh, the lyrics, John Turner, Jeff Parsons, many of you will know it. Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile through your fear and sorrow, Smile and maybe tomorrow you'll see the sun come shining through for you. Light up your face with gladness, hide every trace of sadness. Oh. No a tear may be ever so near. That's the time you must keep on trying. Smile, what's the use in crying? 
going to extinguish the chalice now, but not the light that is left here by Marianne Four. And Ed, I invite you to come up to say the closing words. I'm so pleased that you've all come. Thank you so very much. I can't tell you how important it is to me that we had this service. I miss her so much. Marianne's love was never lost to me. I feel her in so many special ways. through friends, her beloved family, which she shared with me, and the many dreams we shared, she left behind. Her words of wisdom, I will carry with me the remainder of my life. Memories of my dear Mary Ann will never, never be gone. Her love lives on in my heart forever. Thank you for coming. Smith, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being here. Good job. Thank you. Good choice. <laughs>